This next one, which of the following is the most likely cause of cardiogenic shock in this patient? So a 55-year-old woman with a history of diabetes and coronary artery disease is admitted to the intensive care unit following a large anterior wall myocardial infarction. Despite receiving appropriate treatment, she develops cardiogenic shock. Her blood pressure is 75 over 40, heart rate is 110, and respiratory rate is 22 breaths per minute. So immediately just hearing like cardiogenic shock, I would associate that like with like heart failure, MI, that type of thing. So looking at the answer um, choices, hypovolemic shock, I would associate that with like um, like a loss of blood volume, which we do have, or that's indicated by the really low blood pressure, as well as the increase in heart rate. Um, I'm just not sure if that's like the main cause okay. of the shock. Okay. Um, left ventricular failure. I'm not necessarily sure if that's like, that would cause cardiogenic shock. Um, Pulmonary embolism and pneumothorax, I feel like those are more obviously lung problems, which okay. might not lead to cardiogenic shock. And then cardiac tamponade um, would be probably the, the viable choice for me. Okay, you, you think A is your right answer? Yeah. Okay, so talk to me. Remember, what's Bex, uh, what is Bex triad? Okay, Bex triad is hypotension. Okay. Um, was it decreased um, heart sounds? Yep. And then the last one. Juggler venous dissension, right? So that's not present here. Yeah, so unlikely, um, right? right? So, but but let's talk on a, th this question is a little bit tricky, I would say. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm going to kind of work you through, and then I want you to pick an answer after I kind of walk through it, right? Which of the following is the most likely cause of cardiogenic shock? 55-year-old woman with diabetes, coronary artery disease, admitted to the ICU following a large anterior wall um, myocardial infarction, heart attack, right? Had a really large heart attack. So the way I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of thinking about, you know, the heart here, right? You have your coronary arteries, right? Right. If you have an anterior right? Large anterior myocardial infarction, right? That means this portion of the heart is probably dead, right? That's what I'm thinking, right? In my head, despite appropriate um, treatment, she develops cardiogenic shot, uh, blood pressures, you know, she's hypotension, she's tachycardic, she's tachypnic, which makes sense, right? When you're in shock, you usually get these symptoms. Now, which of the following is the most likely cause of cardiogenic shock in this patient? So now kind of using this diagram and kind of how it worked through it, what do you feel as though the best answer is now? Um, I guess left ventricular failure because maybe there's not enough like cardiac output. Okay. So that could be causing the blood pressure loss. Bingo. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. That's how I want you to kind of work through this step-by-step, -step, right? Because, you know, you went to cardiac tamponade, which can cause, right, um, cardiogenic shock, but you, no symptoms here, right? So it can't be it. Right. right? Okay. And then also on top of that, right, um, um, pulmonary embolism that can cause right-sided heart failure, right? But no risk factor for that, right? Tension pneumothorax, right? No trauma, no pop lung, no decreased um, breast sounds on that side, no DVA trachea, so that can't be it. And then hypovolemic shock, it's not, she's not um, bleeding out profusely, right? She doesn't have an arm chopped off. She's not, you know, leaking a bunch of blood or she didn't run a marathon and super dehydrated. Does it make sense? Yes. So the only answer here that really fits is going to be that left ventricular failure. Mm -hmm. 